Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 21st of May 2022. And the title of this episode is People Do Bad Drive Through RPG Hacked. Sixel Publishing is in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. The interview with Mike Sixel is up, and we end by chatting briefly about augmented reality and DD. He's play tested AR Canna. That's a system which uses smartphones to create augmented reality virtual tabletops in your home. I mean, I like the idea. You have friends over, you make them coffee, you eat the biscuits that they brought, and you still have some of that functionality of a virtual tabletop when you start to game. But you're yet to see it work as dreamed. Mike, though, thinks it's just a matter of time. I titled the last podcast, People Do Good because I was gushing about the kindness of the RPG and tabletop community. I was thinking of Ukraine and the battle for human rights in the States. There's been more of the same. Right now, on itch, $5 will get you the bundle TTRPGs for reproductive rights and secure you more than $1,000 in RPG downloads. So, why then do I call this one People Do Bad? Well, I've spoiled that in the title, and just to be precise, there's been a security breach at DriveThruRPG. The team is still investigating, but there's no evidence that any customer data was compromised. It looks like a hacker was able to deface products and also change prices. If you have bought something on Friday night, check that somehow you didn't pay $1,000 for it. If you did... Get in touch with DriveThruRPG and they will sort you out. I know, I know. I usually only get to the title of this short news podcast about halfway through. And some people, some podcasters do this to keep listeners on the stream as a boy. Not me. I just structure a narrative for the show that seems to make sense, but I pick the headline from what I think is the biggest news. And it doesn't always make sense to start big. In this case, though, I wanted to address the issue up front as I don't think there's any reason to be at panic stations. However, as usual, make sure you have a unique password for every site and go check your drive through RPG account. So, since I made claims about trying to structure this podcast, let's stick with drive through RPG. That's the structure, right? This week, a busy week, they kicked off Dave Johnson Games. Why? Steve Wick, who owns the company, explained on an RPG.net thread which surfaced suggestions that the owner of Dave Johnson Games has Nazi sympathies. It's pretty horrific what's been unearthed. The same person creates game content for the latest version of the TSR company. You know, the new one. The one suing and being countersued by Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, I think that's going to get messy, but hopefully it'll be messy in a good way. On the RPG.net thread with the Nazi expose, Week just says, in light of recent information, and does not elaborate. And that's what you can do in capitalism, with no government forcing you to stalk any individual or every game maker. You get to pick who you work with. Just as we consumers get to decide who we buy from or don't buy from. So that's one divorce then. Drive through RPG and Dave Johnson games. And here's another. Dice Hate Me have split from Greater Than Games. Greater Than Games is a board game company that's been buying others and was bought itself. I mean, godly, the mergers and acquisitions in the tabletop space have been incredible. Dice Hate Me boss, Chris Kirkman, called theirs a bold experiment. Well, that experiment has ended, and the two companies have divided the games between each other. And life for both continues. Another departure, a big one, has happened at Pazio Publishing. The Pathfinder and Starfinder owner has announced a new president. Jeff Alvarez is stepping down and Jim Butler is stepping up. Good job and good luck, Jim. Pazio is in a unique place in the marketplace. It isn't afraid of making big moves and it has more to lose than most. I look forward to seeing what Jim does. I also look forward to the bleak, blood-splattered, demon-ridden gore of Chainsaw Man. 
The manga has an anime, and it's coming to Crunchyroll. If you hunt demons with a demon chainsaw, die, and then make a pact with said demon chainsaw to come back, well, your life will get messy. This time, though, I don't think it'll be messy in a good way. Another battle I'm looking forward to is Prey. There's a tiny clue in the name. That movie is Predator 5, a prequel, and I think it's when the hunter first arrives on Earth. The alien will be up against a Comanche Nation warrior. I look forward to the political bickering, but I really just want more Predator action. The first movie was great, the second movie good, and I'm I'm not sure I've seen 3 and 4 unless those were the alien crossovers. And I'm not sure who the prey is in Prey, which I think is the point. IMDB also tells me the movie might be known as Skulls in some countries. And I wonder if that's a political or cultural decision too. It's hard to imagine what the marketing justification would be. One last looking forward for you, but also out of curiosity, uh, here's one. The two anime will be released on the same day in October. One is To Everyone I've Loved Before, and the other is To the Solitary Me That Loved You. Both were based on books, each with the same name. Both books came out at the same time. Both are sequels and prequels of each other. In the story universes, crossing between worlds is common. In one story, a boy stays with his mother after a divorce and then struggles to fit into society. His life is changed when a new schoolmate introduces herself as a lover from a different dimension. In the other story, a boy stays with his father after a divorce and does well. He meets a girl and sparks fly. However, their parents decide to get married first. And so, to avoid being step-siblings, the kids skip worlds. How the two tie in, which they do, is beyond me, but it sounds like an exciting idea. You can watch them in any order, but what a decision to make. Now, before we get onto the bundle deals, I also wanted to call out Backroads City of the Arch, the preview up in Geek Native. That's the first official expansion to Backwater Southern Gothic Horror, which looked great, but couldn't or wouldn't ship to the UK. City of the Arch is all about exploring the post-apocalyptic future of America. Backroads looks to be a way for me to get backwater now, but I'm still on my Kickstarter diet, so I will try and resist the temptation. I have disclosed some exceptions. I will back the Cowboy Bebop role-playing game when it comes out. Mana Project is that good. Now, the playtest rules have just been released and they are free from drive through RPG. They're about 30 pages long, absolutely not the final form, but they look very promising. Now, in bundles, there's some good news too. Monty Cook Games are celebrating their 10th anniversary in style. Now, first up, that means the Cypher System Mega Bundle, which will get you a lot for a little. And then there's the Plotus Cypher Bundle, and that will get you all that expensive but highly acclaimed adventure for an equally low number. Both start at just 18 bucks. Lastly and humble, for Visual Story fans, there's the Heavy Metal Super Massive Bundle. I know, I failed a willpower roll and took a crack at the use of massive. Digital downloads have no mass. Oh well. And on that note, let's wrap there. Enjoy your physics and see you next week.